giant infection dropped earlier this week as a part of the weekly refresh in Modern Warfare. And like we said then, it was actually a bit heftier of a refresh, given that we saw a larger number of featured playlists, a new map, and a new operator introduced, though granted in the shop. But it wasn't just a rehash at that point of some game modes that we'd seen in the past. But Giant Infection was a mode that looked to be the first glance at the long-awaited mode, along with Boots on the Ground Warp. But along with Boots on the Ground Warp, it came with a bit of a catch. Giant Infection was only available on Ania Palace, so was this really the ground war infected that we thought we were going to see. And additionally, only a short bit of time into the playlist in the life cycle it had within this week, it was subsequently pulled and just re-added into the game as of today. So that said, what changed? Why was it pulled? And how different is it compared to the initial introduction? And also, is this the only map that we'll see in Giant Infection? Is this the ground war infected we saw with the season two previews? Or is it just a subtle curveball leading up to it? That's what I discuss here with you with this one today. But as we go along, let me know your thoughts below. If you're enjoying the mode, do you agree or disagree with why it was removed and anything else in between? You guys also seem to enjoy sharing your lunch choices last time. So hey, I mean, if you want to throw that out there, go ahead, go for it. As well, we're presumably rounding into what I think is probably a bigger period of COD in the next couple of weeks here with the worst kept secret of war zone seemingly all but coming at this point hopefully sooner rather than later but make sure you're subscribed if you're not as well to stay up to date with all things modern warfare and all things relating to that in the world of cod but anyways giant infection when it dropped it was a farm for two things those nukes in the mighty mushroom calling card and also xp one of those things still persists. You can still absolutely pull off a nuke and get that Mighty Mushroom Calling Card probably a lot easier in Giant Infection than you could in other game modes of 6v6, 10v10, or Ground War. But beforehand, the XP yield that came along with Giant Infection was absolutely incredible. For roughly about a 10 to maybe 12 minute game, depending on, I guess, how many people got infected, the timing of when people got infected, you'd be pulling on average around, at least my cases, 65 to 70,000 XP per game. 65 to 70,000 XP. For perspective, if you play a full game of search, let's say you top frag and you pull the most score, you'll get around 12,000 XP a game. That's about 10 minutes. Ground War, which can go upwards of 20 minutes if you top frag and you get the highest score in there, you'll probably pull off anywhere around 25,000 XP. So you can see that clear divide here that 25,000 XP in a regular game mode that is twice the length of Giant Infection is only pulling off, on average, less than half of the XP yield of Giant Infection. Well, it was an absolute farm pre-patch for XP. I saw some Reddit threads even posting their XP numbers upwards of 120,000 XP, which is absolutely absurd. Now, whether you thought this was too much, whether you thought it was awesome to get this much XP, it didn't really matter because Infinity Ward ended up tweeting out the Giant Infection playlist was giving out a little too much XP, so we just rolled out a playlist update to remove the mode while we work on a fix. So for a couple of days, it was entirely removed from the game. I don't know if this means that we're going to see it continue on into next week since we didn't get the full week that we normally do with playlists in Modern Warfare, but it was something that at the time just took it out of the rotation. We still had all our other game modes of Boots on the Ground War, Gunfight 3v3 Snipers Only on Rust, and Dirty Old Houseboat to play around with in the LTMs, but Giant Infection was just taken out of the rotation. Personally, I didn't see any issue with the XP yield. Yes, it was a lot, but I mean, if you play the game, we're all going to get to 155 no matter what. So what was the real reason for really doing this, other than maybe saving players a day or so of in-game playtime? But as of today, we we did see this reintroduced and we can take a look at actually the differences here with it. Firstly, it is still, of course, Ania Palace, and that's the only map that we see in Giant Infection, but there were a few different changes that were made here with this. Firstly, stopping power rounds are the only substitute now you end up getting for the deployable cover. You have the option of those two, but beforehand in a couple of loadouts, you had the option for an ammo crate, but this now seemingly only offering stopping power rounds from the many games that I played here with it, which to me, I think is great to see for the damage wise, but also so if you're trying to stay alive, ammo is probably the big thing you want. So one magazine versus a couple, that may be a big game changer for some people. I can't remember off the top of my head if you had Claymore's every single loadout pre-patch, but you now have that as a static lethal on your classes. And there's also an inadvertent bug that was introduced of the random sounds of tack inserting, even though there may not be an infected around you. You could be in a completely open field, but nobody's around and you might hear that. So be alarmed, but if there's nobody there, you're not crazy. But the big change comes down to the XP yield. If you jump into day or for the next couple of days while it may be still around or again maybe even as of next week you'll notice that there is a 
huge difference in terms of that XP yield. From going from 65 to 70,000 XP per game in a 10 minute span, you're gonna now see maybe upwards of 20,000 XP. So kind of rivaling that again of a ground war match that you may do very well in, but again, in maybe, I don't know, two thirds of the time or something like that, but you get drastically less XP now within Giant Infection than you did before. And sure, maybe this is a way so that players don't get bored so quickly once they hit 155 and still have a reason to play on the overall season two time frame and the parameters here with that, the next 30 some days or whatever it may be. But ultimately, I think this comes down to the battle pass progression. Something that, I don't know whose team it would be, I'd like to think that it wasn't Infinity Ward, it was some higher up in a suit that's only caring about the profit margins of a game. I don't really know whose call it would be, but I think this comes down to just simply a strict business decision in terms of what Giant Infection would allow you to do. With this game mode, it would be an easy way to farm through your battle pass, and that's something that, at the end of the day, though it is free for players to actually grind out, there are people that do buy tiers. I don't know anyone that does, but you may be in that category, and there's nothing wrong with that it's your hard-earned money but from a business perspective when something could cut into even the possibility of losing money that's something that needs to be adjusted and so therefore that's why i think it more so may be an executive call from an activision perspective but how does this tie in with giant infection and how does it tie in with a battle pass well the overarching umbrella of how people think the battle pass works is strictly based on time like how it was in black ops 4. that isn't quite the case with modern warfare there is a way to alter it with how your performance works in game and how your xp yield works and it really comes down to the compression of xp so when i say this i mean more so the fact that the more xp in a small period of time you get that's what progresses your battle pass a little bit further it seems like and this is really something you can try out for yourself and is evidenced by the trial ticket system that we've talked about here on the channel before and ranking up fast my go-to trial is always that season one shooting range on speedball which is something that you can get 20,000 xp within a 30 second window about two minutes with load in and load out time so my experience here at this is when I tested it back in season one and then again back with season two's launch. It was something that I played about a 30 minute to a 45 minute span, but in those spans, I ranked up my battle pass three tiers. So if we're going off the experiences of players saying that it takes roughly an hour of in-game playtime, that completely shatters that entire theory. So you can see that XP in a more condensed measure, the more you get in a smaller period of time, it definitely helps out. And so when you consider the fact that previously with this pre-patch version of Giant infection, you could get upwards of 120,000 XP in a 10 to 15 minute span, that obviously breaks down into way more score per minute and way more XP per minute than you'd get in just say a regular match, which moves the battle pass at a regular pace. So that to me is the main factor into why this was adjusted and why it was altered to what we have now, a somewhat nerfed version of Giant Infection. Personally, I don't think we'll get any confirmation ever really as to if this was the explicit reason as to why. I think that even if confronted about it, we'd get some sort of walk around the question or some PR answer that is a uh, vague but maybe pointing in that direction sort of answer but that to me is the reasoning as to why we got this now the big thing that comes next to my mind is well is this the only change we'll see for giant infection if this is actually ground war infected that was previewed from season two's promo material I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm kinda disappointed. I'm kinda bummed that we didn't see this really flow over into other maps, but at the same time, maybe it is just a prelude. Maybe it is something that gets us ready for Ground War Infected, to which I'd love to see other maps. I know that not all of them may be able to work in their own capacity. Ania Palace is, of course, a smaller map comparatively to other Ground War maps out there. Tavorsk District, of course, would be really interesting to see infected on if you don't make any alterations, if you don't close off different portions of the map, because there's so many skyscrapers and so much verticality to it, so I don't know if that map would particularly work. Zokov Boneyard, I think, would really work, but you'd have to up the player count, of course, because 48 players for Ania Palace wouldn't translate over directly one-to-one -one very well in terms of Zokov Boneyard. You could do Karst River Quarry to an extent, so long as you take off things like the chimney locations, and the changes recently made to Kravnik Farmland would be absolutely fantastic as well. Port could introduce a couple of issues given the cranes and, of course, given the rooftops that you have up there. But other than that, it would actually work out pretty well, I think, on a lot of the other maps. So here's the hoping. Fingers crossed. I would love to see Ground War Infected more so move out of just Giant Infection. So 
Infinity Ward, if you're listening, please, I think it'd be awesome to up that player count and also give us a couple of more maps in this rotation here for Giant Infected. But ultimately, that is where we're going to wrap it up. I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more casually here on this weekend and let you guys know of the changes that happened today. If you saw it, come back into the playlist and maybe wondering what was different. Well, the biggest thing, of course, being that XP yield. So that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Do you get where I'm coming from here with this and do you get this theory? Do you think it's plausible? Do you think it's accurate? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare. Updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We get you covered here on the channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like we said, it may or may not be a very big time coming up. We don't have any idea in terms of time frames for stuff, but if that inevitable release of Warzone is right around the corner, man, I'm excited and I'm excited to share some content that we can put out in the future for that. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't done so already. If you want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But all that said and out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.